I just knew I needed to get away and clear my mind. And for me, Jamaica was the only place that would give me that peace that I needed. So I booked a last minute ticket. I came to Jamaica on a two week break not so much vacation it was a break to clear my mind to get my headspace right and to think about what was my next move going to be i came for two weeks i couldn't go back at the end of the two weeks i was like i can't go back to the uk those two weeks turned into two months four years later here i am hello throb fam and welcome back to another video podcast episode if this is your first time visiting a special welcome to you my name is winthrop wellington and here on my channel we have meaningful conversations with guests all about jamaica and today we have a really special guest that i'm so excited to speak with and to have on the show she is also an expat here in jamaica and a fellow Jamaican YouTuber from the UK and is living here in Jamaica. And it is my pleasure to have on the show Deezer of Dat Mise TV. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This is such a pleasure and for I'm sure. so excited. And we were having lunch before. I was yeah. doing my best not to <laughs> ask you any questions because I wanted to save it for our sit down sure. right now. So. Yeah. With that, if you would do us a favor of introducing yourself and, of course, your channel. Okay, so um, like Rep said, I'm Deza. I, too, am an expat from the UK. Been here almost four years. My channel is Dat Mise TV. My YouTube channel, Dat Mise TV. Okay, awesome, yeah. awesome. And so, like you said, you've been here four years. Yeah. What was the impetus for you moving to Jamaica from the UK? I'm from a Jamaican background. Mm -hmm. My uh, my parents are Jamaican. Uh, my family's Jamaican. I've been coming to Jamaica since I was two years old, almost every year, sometimes twice a year. Fell in love with Jamaica. Um, always knew that Jamaica was the place that I wanted to call home permanently at some point. Every time I would come to Jamaica and get off that plane, it was like, I'm home. I'm home, you know? Awesome. Uh, going back to the UK was a wrench, <laughs> you know? But um, so like I said, I always knew in my heart that I'd wanted to make Jamaica my home permanently. I didn't know how I was going to go about that. I actually had no plans in place to make that happen at the time when I came. Four years ago, um, I was going through a really, really, really low point in my life um, in the UK. Um, I had actually walked out of my marriage at that time. Mm -hmm. I was in an abusive marriage. I walked out and I left everything. You know, wow. I just took literally the, the clothes on my back. I, I, I left and I... Um, spend a little bit of time at my sister's house a couple of days. But I just knew I needed to get away and clear my mind. And for me, Jamaica was the only place that would give me that peace that I needed. So I booked a last minute ticket. I came to Jamaica on a two week break. Right. Not so much vacation. It was a break to clear my mind, to get my headspace right and to think about what was my next move going to be. I came for two weeks. Um, I couldn't go back at the end of the two weeks. I was like, I can't go back to the UK. Those two weeks turned into two months. Four years later, here I am. I almost, I kind of never went back permanently. Wow. You know? Yeah. Um, and I've just made Jamaica my home. And I can tell you, it's the best thing I've ever done. The best thing I've ever done. It's very rare that you hear a story like that. You yeah. kind of just get up and go. Yeah. And I know with doing something like that, not having a plan, that must have been a little challenging coming yeah. here in the beginning. So what did you actually end up doing uh, for, for financing and for to sustain your life when you first moved here? Yeah, so for the first couple of months, I kind of just lived off what I had, you know, savings. Um, then I had to get serious and think about what could I do. Now, when I left the UK, I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I was a senior teacher in a, in a good position. So I thought, you know what, I could, I could do the same here, right? You know, I could become a teacher I started to look uh, for teaching vacancies there were many teaching vacancies about but unfortunately um, the salary was below what I thought would be able to stay you know to sustain my lifestyle in Jamaica right. I started looking online at things that maybe I could maybe working from home opportunities and I stumbled across um, an ad that said um, English teachers needed to teach foreign students working from home. So I looked into that a little bit more. Um, I applied, I got through. And um, I was doing online teaching, teaching children and adults from all over the world from the comfort of, you know, the apartment that I was in at the time from mm -hmm. home. And that sustained me. That kept me 
Um, and that was my main source of income for, a, a, you know, for a couple of years. Wow. And I remember watching that video and yeah. I think that's how I found you, one yeah. of those videos. And you were, I remember you explaining, oh, and you could do this. Anybody yeah. can do this. So is this something that you would recommend people to do if they were considering moving to Jamaica or in anywhere else, like as a source of digital income, so to speak. Definitely, definitely. I would recommend, um, you know, for people to maybe look into online teaching. And the great thing with online teaching is that, yes, I may have had the experience of teaching before. You don't necessarily have to have teaching experience per se. If you're an English native speaker, you know, maybe from, uh, you know, UK, Canada, USA, Australia, so to speak, you can do it. I see. You know, you just need to be a native English speaker. That, that's really it. You know, they give you all of the, the tools and equipment and the resources you need. You'll go through the training. And it's a great way to maybe um, have kind of an employment in another country, you know, mm -hmm. um, without necessarily having to maybe, you know, <laughs> apply locally, so to speak. It's a good way to get your foot on the employment market, but from the comfort of your home. And I think it's, yeah, it's definitely something I would encourage other people to do. Okay. Look into Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And how did your, your family feel about you moving to Jamaica? I don't think it was any surprise to be honest. Really? Yeah. I don't think it was a surprise. Okay. I think my family knew my love for Jamaica. I see. <laughs> because like I said, I was here all the time, but I've had 100% support from my family. You know, um, I'm a mother too, and I have a 21 year old son. And um, at the time he was fully supportive and having my family support, meant everything to me because if I didn't have their support I'm not sure if I would I would be here now you know living the life I'm living in Jamaica so they were 100% behind me that's amazing yeah and did you say you have a 20 year old son 21 year old son oh my gosh yeah. there, there's no way <laughs> <laughs> I would even expect you, you threw me yeah. off with that one yeah wow amazing amazing yeah. and so like is your family jealous that you're here in Jamaica <laughs> I'm not sure if they're jealous. I mean, they come out here often as okay, well. Good, good, of course, good. the pandemic has slowed that down a little right. bit. But uh, I wouldn't say jealous, but I think they're just really happy for me. Mm -hmm. And I think they, you know, Jamaica hasn't been easy. The journey hasn't been easy, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But they're happy of the things that I've achieved and where I'm at in my life, you know. And I just think they're, they're, they're happy that I'm happy, mm -hmm. you know. And if that was in Jamaica or if that was another country, I think for them, you know, my happiness is, is what's important. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing to have that support. And I, I know I know how important that is. Yeah. Right? Like, let's get into your YouTube channel. Like, yeah. what was the inspiration for you starting your channel? Yeah. So there is a bit of a story behind that, because um, like I said, I was doing my online teaching. Mm -hmm. That was going great. Right. That was bringing in the, the money that was sustaining my lifestyle in Jamaica. And then the pan and then the and then COVID hit the pandemic mm -hmm. hit us. And um, my partner at the time lost his job instantly. He lost two jobs, actually, because he was working two jobs. He lost both of those jobs within a week of each other. Jeez. About a couple of weeks later, I then lost my job as a result of the pandemic. So here we are, uh, jobless, wow. <laughs> right? We've still got bills to pay. We've still got responsibilities like everybody else. Um, and it was a really, really, really low point in our lives. Mm. I mean, I remember my mum saying to me when I was kind of explaining how low we were, she said to me, and it always stayed in my mind, she said, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't travel, you didn't move to Jamaica to live in poverty. But that's almost what I was living in at that point. Wow. Really and truly. We were eating one meal a day at that point. A lot of people said to me, what are you doing? Like, you can go, you can go back to the UK, you know? And I knew I could because I wouldn't be facing it in the UK. But you know what? I was determined to see it through. And this had become my home. And I understand that in life we go through ups and downs. And I wasn't because now I'm at a low point going to pack up everything and run away. I was going to face it through. Um, and my partner, my partner, I'd been talking about YouTube for a little while and I was kind of, oh, yeah, you know, because I'm, I, I, w I was quite a private person. I, I wasn't the type of person to put myself out there and to, you know, my business is my business. I'm right, not going to put right. myself out there. But when he said that, um, it was literally, uh, yeah, a couple of days after he'd lost his job and, he, and, and you know, said, you know, what, this YouTube thing that, that, that we, we, we've been talking about, should we give it a go? And we sat down, we spoke about it and we said, you know what, we give ourselves a year and see how it goes. Why not? Um, I knew I had a story to tell. We knew we had experiences to share. Um, and that's where it was birthed from. And literally a few days after, we, 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 we put our first um, video out there and it, we've kind of never looked back. I'm loving every minute of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. That's, I, I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. that, you know, and you kind of just don't know what people have gone through right. and what they're going yeah. through. And I think that's amazing that you had such conviction to be here in Jamaica, to persevere past that situation of 
one meal a day. You know, yeah. again, I would I never th- I would have thought that that yeah. that's what the situation was. Obviously, happy that it worked out yeah, for you and continues you. to work out. And with your channel, like I love your videos. I think they are super informative and you bring a lot of value to the subscribers and what made you go down this path of i would say and correct me if i'm wrong i see it as you exploring jamaica together with outlaw i see you bringing like a lot of value in terms of the different real estate that's available all literally all over the island in terms of kind of traveling the island and showing different um places that people can enjoy that was really just something I wanted to do okay because as much as I'd been coming to Jamaica over the years there was so many parts of Jamaica that I'd never been to that I'd never explored and that was really just fulfilling my um (laughs) you know my my wants to 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 learn more about Jamaica right this beautiful place as we were going along the journey we were just filming you know we were just we were just taking out the camera and filming it so that's where that came from but we soon realized that people were interested and people wanted to find out just as much as we did about, or I did, surely, about Jamaica and what Jamaica has to offer. In terms of doing the house tours and, and finding new developments around the island, again, that's me. <laughs> that's <what's laughs> okay, me. gotcha. Yeah, I, I, um, I love real estate. I love looking at new homes. I love getting ideas, you know, from my own home. Um, and that's where that, I'm, I'm nosy, right? <laughs> I want to see what's, what's going on behind the door. So yeah, that's where that came from. Um, and again, um, people started reaching out to us and, you know, inquiring about these houses and asking, oh, you know, could you maybe go into this parish and see if they've got anything there? And, and again, it's just, you know, it's that, that's, that's, that's just, it's just spread and it's just become part of who we are and part of our channel now. Right, right. And I know and I understand that through the channel, you've been able to create other business opportunities. And can you tell us a little bit about those? Yes, so grateful, so grateful for the channel. When we started the YouTube channel, we didn't know where it was going to go. Um, we didn't know it would, it would get us to this point. But um, as a result of our channel, we launched our own business, um, doing tours, tours and excursions island wide. Now, before Outlaw lost his job, he was actually um, a driver, a user driver. So he was taking tourists. He's already registered. You know, mm-hmm. he was. This was his job, and we thought, you know what, you've got something there. So what, let's see. Let, let's put it out there and see if, if people will respond. So we set up our tours business, Dat Misse Island Tours Jamaica. Okay, <laughs> nice. Um, where we offer people, you know, airport pickups, drop offs, tours, um, you know, around the island. And I've got to say, you know, I'm so grateful to our subscribers because they have been, I think, eighty percent um, of our customers oh, have that, used and subscribed. That's amazing. Yeah. So they essentially, they, they, they watch your videos, yep. or found, your, found your channel, and then they come on island and support you in this definitely. business venture. That's, just, that's definitely it, yeah. That's so mind-boggling yeah. to me, you know? <laughs> and then even, like, I, you know, I can relate with the hotel here. It's like yep. people come and they watch my, my videos, and then they come stay at Travelers. Yeah, and I, it's exactly. like, these yeah. are just, it's just crazy to me. Like, this is the world that we I live know, in, right? right? And so interesting. And then you also do even help people find real estate as yeah. well. That's another business venture yeah. that you guys are on, right? Yeah. So um, again, this wasn't planned. This wasn't a route that we thought that um, we were going to go down. But um, when we advertised our tours business, somebody got into contact with us and said, hey, I don't know if you do this, but you know, I've got a, I've got a piece of land and I'm just wondering, do you think you'd be able to go and have a look at it for me? I'm unable to travel, obviously because of the pandemic, but I just want to see the condition that it's in. I want to see if you know, there's any building works happening around. And I kind of thought, I spoke to Outlaw about it. Like, what do you think? You're like, yeah, of course. So we took that on. I mean, we didn't advertise the business. We just, we did it. And then we were getting more calls, more inquiries about this type of thing. So I thought, this is becoming a thing now because people are getting in contact with us, you know, to help them find land or to help them view a house. Um, and so we put it out there. So that's another part of our business, like you say. Um, if you're looking for a lot or, you, you, you know, you've seen a house that you you want us to view, we'll go along, we'll view it, we'll video it, we'll video the community, uh, get as much information as we can. We also act as the um, the first point of contact with the realtors. So we kind of take do, do the groundwork for you, I so see. to speak. Yeah, and um, yeah, assist people in, in that way too. I think that, again, I like my mind is blown when I hear <laughs> stuff like this. You know, you, you, you started out a channel where you... You like exploring Jamaica anyway, yeah. and you decided to yeah. record it, so you put it out there. Yeah. And then you started doing videos on real estate because yeah, that's what you're yeah. curious exactly. about, right? Yeah. 
And then now you've turned it into two separate business yeah, revenue streams yeah. from that. So, I mean, that's awesome. So congrats yeah, to, you. to you, you, you both. Thank you. And with your channel, like what are, if you, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what are some of the goals of your channel? To be honest, when we started the channel, we, we just, we, we didn't have any goals. It was mm-hmm. just about um, seeing what happens, right? But I think as the channel has grown and continues to grow, I think one of our main goals is really um, to be able to help people who maybe want to come back over to, want to either return to Jamaica or they want to um, come to Jamaica t- to live. And hopefully in some of the things that we show, the positive aspects of Jamaica, um, that we can encourage people you know to maybe um get a better understanding of what they can do like i said in the online teaching maybe get a better understanding of maybe some of the developments or or you know house types they can 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 um look into or maybe building um so yeah we're really just helping those who are interested in maybe making a life Mm -hmm. um for themselves here in jamaica oh amazing uh that's you know one of the pillars of my channel as well is and i think you're kind of alluding to this is the stereotypical negative news that you see and hear about Jamaica. And I think you're doing a fantastic job of showing people like, hey, if you walk down the street, you're probably not going to get shot. (laughs) If you walk down the street, you're probably not going to get robbed, right? And so I think that's just so important that that people like you are are doing this and are showing this side of Jamaica because it's I think it's so amazing to have a platform like YouTube to be able to share these experiences we need more people like us to, to yeah. do this, I think. And I, like we're both on the same page. I think we both got the same mission of really uplifting Jamaica through sure. that of the diaspora yeah. and the people here. And I think this is such a diamond in the rough. I know you're in St. Mary yeah. and I don't know too much about St. Mary, to be <laughs> honest, but I'm sure there's tremendous potential there that is just untapped, just like this tremendous t- potential here sure. in the grill. And I find that my channel sometimes, like, in the sense that I try to use my channel to show people, like, look, life can be really good here. Yeah. And life can be better than where you are. Yeah. And here's how and here's why. Yeah. Right? And I try not to be pushy about it. <laughs> but I just, to me, I look Jelly at it as like, I am yeah. presenting information, yeah. right? And take it sure. as, as, you, sure. as you will. And again, I think you're doing like a, a, a great you. job with Thank that you. Thank in that you. sense. And so what would you say is maybe the biggest challenge to being a YouTuber, a Jamaican YouTuber? Um, yeah, <laughs> um, we love it. Like we just put that out right. there. Yeah, we do love what we do. Um, I think it is time consuming, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, you know, of course, uh, the viewers see the end product, right? Right. Which is great. But there is a lot of work that goes into it, you know, um, thinking about content, um, you know, the ideas, the, the not just the filming, but the editing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the behind the scenes stuff that nobody ever really sees um, can be not so much challenging but it's just time consuming and of course we're trying to do youtube whilst running other businesses right so i think if youtube was our full time i think i'm not saying it would be easy it wouldn't but i think um we'd be a lot more we'd have a lot more time to dedicate to it but i think we're trying to juggle everything right, right. um I, i'm not saying it's the best way but um for where we are right now we're doing what we need to do you know we're trying to uh, you know um, build our brand um, and we have to put the work in yep. um, but we, we're loving every we're loving every minute of it mm-hmm. you know I must say it's it's a journey it's a learning it's a learning journey it's not always easy like I said but we're loving every minute of it and um, taking on board the lessons that come along you know would you want to be a full-time youtuber at some point um would I want to be good question good question <laughs> um so here's the thing um I would love to dedicate more time to YouTube. I would. But I think just my very nature, my very character, um, I do like to be busy and I like to be doing different things. Right. Okay. So I would never rule out being a full-time YouTuber, but I, I, I would also like to know that I've got other things maybe in the background going on. I may not need to be there, you know, full-time or, you know, maybe I've got some other people helping me to run these ventures. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm interested in multiple things. So I love YouTube, but it's not the only thing that I'm interested in. I see. So I, I wouldn't say no to full-time YouTube, but I, I need other things going on in the background as well. Okay. Yeah. Understood. So what is 
your favorite thing about being a YouTuber? <laughs> Um, I think the favorite thing for me is um, just being able to express myself because like I said previously, um, I've always been quite a quiet person, mm -hmm. never really outspoken, um, quite shy at times. And I think with YouTube, it's given me a confidence that I probably didn't even know I had. And it's allowed me to just be more free, to be myself a bit more and just to be a bit more expressive. And I love that, you know. I think for me, that's the, that's the main thing that YouTube has really done for me is, you know, allow me to just open myself up, self up a lot more. That's awesome. And I can relate to that because uh, I am definitely an introverted person. Yeah. I would consider myself shy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and so what was that journey like for you to be a person who is to themselves, but then to get up in front of a camera mm. and share your thoughts and your experience in life to the entire world? Yeah, well, of course, in the beginning, it was... Um, it was, it was quite hard because you're still quite sheltered and guarded and, you know, I, I was only kind of giving off certain information. Mm -hmm. um, but the turning point came when I, um, I sat and I did a video about what my life was really like in the UK and wow. I, I just opened up, you know, and it was, I say, I say this on the video, it was like therapy for me. It was like the therapy I didn't know I needed wow. because I just turned the camera on and I just expressed myself and I just spoke and I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to put the video out. But in that moment, I just, I, I just knew that I needed to just let out some feelings and just let some things out. And I just turned the camera on and I just spoke from my heart and I let it out. And that, I think that was a turning point. I um, put that video out. The love and support I got for it was just immense. Um, and I think that at that point, um, I felt a lot more comfortable with just being myself, you know, because I was accepted. I wasn't judged, mm -hmm. you know. People, a lot of people could relate, actually, to where I was coming from or what I said. And uh, having been somebody that was so like shy and reserved, to be able to, <laughs> to do that, it was freeing. It was freeing. I can imagine. It was freeing. I can yeah. imagine. That's amazing. And to be, and I don't think people understand mm -hmm. the kind of personal journey that we go on yeah. as, as YouTubers as we, as we go through and we progress. Mm -hmm. And... Yes, this can be very much so an outlet, not only to express ourselves, sure. but also from a therapy standpoint. Sure. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. And so earlier we were talking about the, the, the move to Jamaica and also sharing the experience or your experience with others about how you did this move yeah. and also your life and lifestyle here yeah. in Jamaica. Being in, in St. Mm. Mary... What is unique about there and why should people consider moving to St. Mary? Well, let me just say, I'm biased. St. Mary is the best parish, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your guest on we'll my show. Like that, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, St. Mary. I didn't know anything about St. Mary until I moved there a few years ago. Um, I was always ochi, 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 senan, 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 because that's what I knew, um, even though my parents don't come from there, but that's where I used to stay the most. Um, we made the move to St. Mary, and um, St. Mary is a very small parish, uh, probably one of the smallest parishes in Jamaica, but it's one of the greenest parishes, the most lushest parishes. That's where all the banana comes from. St. Mary, you get a lot of coconuts in St. Mary. Um, so just aside from the, the lush and vegetation, you've also got many rivers in St. Mary. So if you're a, if you're a water person, mm -hmm. it's the place for you, you know. St. Mary is, is a quiet parish, you know. If you want to get, get away from the hustle and bustle, think about St. Mary. Um, it, has, it has a lot to offer. We've got Spanish Bridge, which is a great um, attraction, not too touristy. So right. if you like... If you like kind of secret hideaways or, you know, little um, spots that are, are not so frequented, St. Mary has many of those. Okay. So, yeah, come to St. Mary. All right. <laughs> and I'm trying to convince people to come yes. to Negro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I haven't been to Spanish Bridge, but I, I want to go on that swing and yeah. do a flip yeah. and go into yeah. the river. <laughs> Have you done that already? No. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I love St. Mary. Um, I'm not really a water person. I like to wet my feet. Maybe that's something I need to work, work on, building my confidence <laughs> in the water. So maybe you might see it on the channel. Good content, <laughs> yeah. good content. And when people are inquiring with you about either moving here or maybe spending an extended period of time, 
What are some of the, the common questions that you get um, during these inquiries? Yeah, so um, I think the first most common question I get is, how can I make an income? Mm. <laughs> like, you know, I want to come, but, you know, ha- ha- what are some of the things I could do to make an income? And, of course, we've spoken about this, uh, my journey in online teaching, um, and, of course, encouraging others to uh, maybe think about pursuing that line of, of work as well. The second most common question is, is it safe? And, again, we kind of covered that. Mm-hmm. Um, Is it safe? I want to come, but they're fearful, um, you know, for their safety. Um, So that's another really common question. Um, The third most common question is really about the cost of living. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people want to know, will they be able to afford it? You know, what's the cost of food? What's the cost of accommodation, uh, transportation? Um, So, yeah, I think those would be really the main main questions that that I get asked. I see. And... We both have pretty mature audiences yeah. that, that subscribe to our channels. What do you say to, to people, either retirees or people who are on the verge of retiring, mm-hmm. who are considering Jamaica, and that safety issue comes up? What do you tell them? Yeah, well, I don't try to push anything on anybody. Right. Everybody has to make their own decision, right? Um, but I do hope that um, I am a living example and a living testament to um to what Jamaica is really like you know um I think it's unfortunate that sometimes what the media pushes out um uh, uh, you know and and obviously what you see on social media is the negative aspect there is more to Jamaica I'm not saying Jamaica's perfect and I would love to see a Jamaica where it's crime free of course um but every other every other country is with is is with their faults as well right. you know and I do think sometimes it's blown out of proportion um what I would say, though, to returnees coming, um, maybe retired people, if you do feel concerned, I would say maybe position yourself somewhere um, that may may offer you that extra sense of security. So, for example, I know gated communities are not for everybody, and I would never try to push that on, every, on everybody. But for some people, that may be... Um, that maybe that safety blanket that they're looking for, that they're in a community um, whereby there is maybe extra security there. Um, but also, it's common sense, really. You have to be cautious. It's common sense, right? Um, I wouldn't walk down the street with my bag open. I right. wouldn't do it in Jamaica. I wouldn't do it in London, right? <laughs> because right. I know I'd be pickpocketed in Jamaica or in London. So it's, it's, it's cautious. You be careful about where you go. You, you're, you know, you're mindful of who you, in, who you deal with. Um, and... Just use your common sense, like you would do back home. Right. Use your common sense. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And I say that a lot, tell people that a lot mm. too. And even from visitors, yeah. guests, tourists yeah. who come here, sometimes people just throw the caution to the wind yeah. and they just don't behave the same right. way that they would back right. home, wherever they're from. And you still have to have those walls up, so of to course. speak, when, when you're in Jamaica. Yeah. And you you said something also very important is I think really is like be careful about who you surround yourself yeah. with, who you associate yeah. with, you with, because I think that's also a big part of it. And I was going to divulge into why that may <laughs> be, but I'm, I'm actually going to leave that alone. But it's important to just be conscious of that. Definitely. right? I think that's that's really, really Definitely. great advice to just be conscious about who you associate with, who you call your friends and who you share certain information sure. with. Sure. And I mean, you're from London. I'm from New York. Yeah. I would do that anyway. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. Right, yeah. right. Through your channel. I understand you also have a merchandise line coming out. Yes, we do. I, I'm excited about this. <laughs> so, yeah, we do have um, a merch line coming out. Um, and again, this was nothing. This was this wasn't anything that we thought about. You know, it wasn't the direction that we thought. Oh, we've got to do merch. No, um, people were reaching out to us and saying, um, you know, that thing that Outlaw says because he's got his little slogans and his slangs, manners yeah. and prayers. You know, um, <laughs> what, what does he say? Um, uh, Round there we are swinger. He's got all these little sayings <laughs> that he says and people quickly um, adapting them and taking on to them. So people are reaching out saying, you need to put some stuff out with right, these sayings right, on, right? right? So that's where that really idea really came from. Um, but with the merch, um, we've, tr- we've tried to expand it more than just sayings and slogans um, that people may be familiar with on our channel. So uh, we have an inspirational, what I call the inspirational collection. And it's just um, a-, a collection whereby... Um, it has inspirational quotes on. So one of them is created with a purpose. 
One of them is faith over faith over fear. And the idea behind that was just to, you know, sometimes we may be feeling a certain way, mm-hmm. but you know, sometimes we just need a few words of encouragement. And if we're wearing that, hopefully we look down, we see that hopefully that, that might just uplift us. You know, we've got another collection where it's um, um, inspirational black women, you know, in their natural form with their natural hair rocking their locks or rock, rocking their short hair so it's it's all about inspiration yeah the, 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 the merch is all about inspiring and feeling good i love it yeah. i love it i can't wait for that yeah. to come out and take a look i'll be definitely getting thank you a few pieces of articles <laughs> myself with that where can people one find out more information about the merch when it's launched and then also how can people get in touch with you so the the merch will be launched very very soon look out for it people so um we have a website it's the website for the merch is um that me dot my shopify.com that me say dot my shopify.com where all the merch is um and if anybody wants to reach out to us for any reason um it's just uh that me tv um instagram that me tv <laughs> I think you can see the theme. Yep. Um, Facebook, that me say TV. So where, speaking of that me say, yeah. where did you get the name from? Okay, so that, that's Outlaw's fault. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there is a bit of history. We didn't okay. just pluck it out of the air. There's history behind that me say, um, because um, Outlaw was actually a studio owner. So Outlaw is well known in the music business, very well known in the music industry. Um, he used to have his own studio um, and the studio was called Respect and Manners. Okay. Um, so you'd often hear him say respect and manners or yep. manners and prayers. Mm-hmm. Um, the studio is called respect and manners, but on the studio it says uh, respect and manners that me say. So that was also one of his punchlines as well. I see. So when we were thinking about a name, he was like that me say. I was like mm, okay, and it's just yeah, we just ran with that. So I guess that's kind of become that me says because is a is a brand. It's become <laughs> our brand. Okay, yeah. awesome. So now we know. Now we <laughs> yeah. know. And last question, when is the merch launching? Oh, I would say in about two weeks time. Okay. Yeah, in about two weeks time. So definitely by the end of February. It's February 2022. Tw- February 2022. Okay. All right. Yeah. So everybody knows. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are, this was amazing, better than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> and you. I was super excited in the first place. So I just want to thank you for taking the time out, come all the way no to problem. Negril and thank spend you. some time with us thank and, and so chat much. it up. And of course, everybody who's out there, definitely go out and subscribe to Dat Me Said TV. Super great value you get. Learn about Jamaica in different ways, different aspects of real estate and things of that nature. And I'm co-signing on that. So you know <laughs> it's solid information out there. So once again, thank you so thank much. You for me again. Absolutely. Thank you. Loved and- it. And thank you all for joining us here today. And of course, if you got any value out of our conversation here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps out a ton. And before we go, we got to bring on Outlaw. So come on in, Outlaw. <laughs> Say hello to the people. I'll give you, I'll give you the chair. You can close it out. <laughs> Man, I'm impressed. If thanks for life. Yes, the people. This is Outlaw from Dark Mr. TV. There goes Deezer. <laughs> yes, my other half. Yes, trying to get it full. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so this is the outlaw, as we all know that. So, I don't know where things go. Round the way as we go. And all these things. So, as we said, we just take our time and do what we have to do. Take it slow and easy. We said, one round, cocoa full the basket. And all these <laughs> things. So, it's a big respect to man like crop. Yeah, take everything full up. Yeah. So, we never drop it. So, so some people are trying to swap it. But no problem, they give thanks for life. They know every man need a wife. So it's a long life and happy living. Go to the small piece of world. And all these things. Promising. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can see where the merch has come from, right? Yeah. <laughs> Blessings. 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 Blessings.